Some weeks ago, a friend of mine visited me in the workshop, worried about rust bubbles at the front fenders of his GT. We put it on the lift and opened the fenders, and we found a rusted away outer sill and a pillar. It took me another six weeks at this point to finish the Carrera, but eventually, early May, Greasy Fingers Channel celebrated the return of Alfa Romeo. The fender trimmed and all the sad remainings of the outer sill removed, Johannes wanted me to go step by step and save as much as possible of the sill's alleged original substance, and so I only cut out a hand's width to start. What everybody knows somehow, but only a few are ready to accept, there is no such thing as an original GT sill. This one here has been repaired by welding a second one over it, not an uncommon repair back in the day. Decisions were made and I started up the grinder to remove the outer sill completely.
There cannot be a Greasy Fingers film without the usual two-minute rant about people's weird ideas to do rust protection. Ridiculous amounts of grease have been dumped in and on this poor car. But as could be seen in my last video, it just doesn't work that way. The sills of alphas of the 60s are made of panels that are stapled under acute angles. And in these crevices, that's where the rust begins. Grease is much too tenacious to penetrate them. So what we have here is another beautiful car pointlessly messed up and left without protection at the places where it matters. If it wasn't the car of a friend, I even would not let it enter my workshop, because this stuff, it will distribute across the workshop, then your body and hair, and eventually, I kid you not, you will find traces of it in your bed. With all the filth removed and all old seams cleaned up, the repair could begin. As always, my approach is to limit my restoration work to sections that really need replacement and preserve as much as possible of the original substance. In a first go, I therefore trimmed the lower front corner of the A-pillar to an extent that I could reach the rotten parts behind it, but not more. The inner A-post was partly rusted away too and again I only cut out what could not be saved. Luckily the inner sill, which is the backbone of the entire design, I found in good shape.
Now, one could either make repair panels himself or use prefabricated ones. And as fit is good, prices are reasonable and the parts are made of good steel, I saved the effort. Basically, to cut sections out properly, I sometimes make cardboard models, but normally I prefer to use the actual part as a template. The project will eventually cost the steel ruler's life, but as I'm buying them 3 for 10 euros, I can live with that. The product I'm using here is so-called inox spray from the rattle can and it's basically stainless steel particles embedded in some temperature resistant resin. I use it to seal spot welding areas and everything else that is getting too hot for normal paint. It conducts electricity which means I can ignite an arc on it and the idea is that it will melt during welding and solidify when temperature is gone, leaving the spot weld embedded in paint. This is a staple of panels welded on each other under acute angles that I was talking about earlier on, leaving cracks and crevices and a cozy home for rust. At this stage already three panels are layered here, two more to come. Ah, 
Ragazzi, what have you done? With the new outer sill basically in place and the A-pillar repaired, let's call it a day. In the next film you will see the restoration of the B-pillar, which wasn't damaged very much, the establishment of some reasonable rust protection, a whimsical choice of colors, the completion of the fenders and the departure of a happy man. And now tell me, aren't that very good reasons to like, comment, subscribe and recommend the channel?